Well, everyone, the iPad mini fifth generation is a very interesting iPad that Apple made so many years ago. And although it wouldn't be the first iPad I'd recommend people to buy, it still is an iPad that's still supported and it still probably has somewhat of a future ahead of it. So from that standpoint, it may be worth it for some people, but I would probably tell you to watch this video because there's probably going to be way more iPads and way more things I'd probably recommend to keep your eye out for than this particular product in that, you know, on the on this particular iPad. But if you want to pick up some iPads, I would recommend buying this year. Links will be down in the description. You can pick them up from there and you can help support the channel at the same time. Now, starting off with the outside of the iPad mini 5, this thing on the front has a 7.9 inch IPS LCD panel. It was a very high resolution and it still is a very, very high resolution now. This iPad came out like what like five years ago that is a massive amount of time for this ipad to be if kind of released back then because it still is a very very cool ipad from this you know body standpoint it doesn't feel like a super outdated ipad it doesn't feel super cheap and the display of this thing still looks and feels very very good from that standpoint now you're getting the bezel on the top and the bottom of this particular device which can be you know kind of annoying for some people like if you're wanting a better ipad that performs way better in a lot of different ways then i don't know if this will be the one that i'd recommend the average person to buy because from that standpoint you're going to be getting an ipad that's going to be probably a little bit better in some ways from a you know better looking ipad like an ipad or 4 or like an ipad pro 2018. So keep that in mind, again, not the biggest deal in the world, but that is kind of one minor thing to keep in mind there. Beyond that though, this iPad on the front still looks great. The Touch ID sensor still looks great for a lot of people. And I definitely would tell you this is a very good iPad from that standpoint, from the front at least because it doesn't look super ugly. On the bottom, you are getting a lightning port, which can be a little bit of a turnoff considering the iPad mini 6 has USB-C, but this iPad does support Apple Pencil 1, which is great. It plugs right into the bottom of this iPad. It may have been better if this thing actually got Apple you know, Pencil 2 support in some way, but Apple Pencil 1 support still is perfectly fine for a lot of people. And I don't really think it's like that big of a deal for the average person if they use an iPad that still has Apple Pencil 1. Now you are getting the kind of curved side on this particular iPad as well. Again, not the biggest deal in the world. Most iPads are flat now, but it is nice to have kind of this type of you know panel from that standpoint too. On the back side, you are getting this kind of like flat side, you know, the curves are side, the sides are curved to it, but the back side is completely flat, which is really cool. You can easily just go ahead and just, you know, plug this thing in and, you know, into a case or something or some other accessories. And now this thing completely working fine, which is really cool. You get that single camera setup on the top left as well, which again is a very nice touch to have. You can easily just go ahead and just use this thing as you normally would. And it works completely fine. Like I love having this type of capability because it works so well. Like it's a really, really good iPad from that standpoint. And that's something I love about this particular iPad as well. Now, beyond that though, there's not a whole lot of else going to it. It's pretty much what you'd expect. And I definitely would say the exterior of this iPad still holds up fairly well in a lot of different ways. Now, moving on, another thing to keep in mind with this particular iPad is its price tag. This thing is not really available in the brand new market anymore. So we're kind of stuck in this like weird little phase where this thing really, like I said, isn't really worth buying for the average person. You are much better off buying an iPad that is still probably supported. And things like the iPad mini 1, you know, the, uh, the iPad mini 5, things like the iPad mini 1 to the iPad mini 4, those iPads really aren't supported anymore. But the iPad mini 5 is still supported. It's one of the two iPad minis that are currently supported with software. So because of that, with this iPad, the pricing strategy is very interesting because you can go ahead and buy this thing and still have an iPad that is still supported with software, which is actually a very, very nice thing to have. And that's something I love having with these types of iPads. So that right there is probably one big thing to keep in mind that the price tag of this thing is fairly cheap in the used market. Camera wise, probably one of the, not the best thing going on for this particular iPad. You do have a single eight megapixel standard camera on the back and you are getting a seven megapixel standard camera on the front. Now the thing with this particular camera is that it's always funny when our front cameras and our back cameras have almost the same megapixel count. It's always been very, very funny to me, but kind of the main issue that we're running into with this particular device is that with the iPad mini five, there's it's a very limited camera so things like 4K at 60 on the front and the back aren't really here on this particular iPad, which can be kind of a disadvantage for some people. On top of that, with this particular iPad, you are missing out on a few other things as well. So no 4K at 60, but like inside of social media applications, you're missing out on things. There's no all direct camera or telephoto lens on this iPad either. So I feel like those things are very, very kind of weird. And I do think that is a kind of like a, not an obnoxious thing going on for this particular iPad, but it's kind of a weird thing going on for this particular iPad from that standpoint. So take that as you will, but that's kind of like one thing to kind of keep in mind there, that this iPad isn't going to be the best performing iPad from that standpoint, from a camera standpoint, because it really isn't that great of a camera. Think of like almost like an iPhone 6 type of camera inside of this thing. So again, kind of like a small minor thing to keep in mind here. But if you are wanting the better performing iPad, you know, from a camera standpoint, this one's not really going to be that great. 
So keep that in mind, but that's really all I have to say about the camera standpoint here. Software-wise, this is one reason that's going to make or break this iPad for you. The problem with this particular iPad, for one, is that it's you know not the newest one, but it is still supported with software. So that is kind of an advantage for this particular device, is that you can go ahead and basically use this iPad still, which is great, but it is somewhat in a limited version of software right now, for the most part for some people, because you're not really going to be getting all those cool features on iPad OS 17 on your flagship, which you're also going to be missing on some other things too. Like for one, for you know, to be honest, you're not going to be getting that great of an experience, I would say, for the average iPad. For if you're expecting like the bit the best of the best, you know, from an iPad. But if you know that this iPad is five years old and you know that this iPad isn't really going to be that great for the average and if you know that this iPad isn't going to be giving you like flagship type of experiences, then you should be totally fine with this type of device. Like I do think you're going to be perfectly fine with this type of iPad. And that's a very, very important thing to keep in mind because the performance of this thing is one thing, but the software experience and the software features, it may be limited for some people. Again, not the biggest deal in the world, but just know that that's one side of it. It also may not be supported for like another 10 years or five years or three years. It may only get like two more years of software updates, which can be kind of a disadvantage for some people once again, but I don't think it's like that big of a deal either and it's just one thing to kind of keep in mind so that kind of covers it up there now from a performance standpoint this ipad has that apple a12 bionic chip inside of it with three gigabytes of ram now i will tell you the, the ram side of this thing with three gigs really isn't that amazing it's not the best you know amount of ram to have and definitely isn't the most amount of ram to have inside of a device like this but i will tell you from my personal opinion i do think having something like the ipad you know mini 5 it actually isn't that bad of a performing device like it actually is pretty good and i do think if i'm going to go ahead and buy something like an ipad mini the apple a12 bionic is still fairly good for the most part i don't think it's like a super old outdated ipad and for one i will tell you from a performance standpoint like if you're wanting to go through and use this thing as an everyday ipad this thing is going to be perfectly fine like you're going to be getting a very good performing device for the most part which i think is great and once again i don't think that's like a big deal i've had a lot of ipads and i do think the apple a12 bionic chip is still fairly good like it's not really that bad or terrible of a performing you know, chipset. And I do think if I'm going to go and use one, this one's actually not that bad of a performing one, which I think is very cool. So if you're wanting an iPad that's going to be handling things fairly decently well that you throw at it, this one's not a bad one. And I do think like if you're going to just have an iPad that you can use on an everyday basis, this is probably a decent one when it comes down to it. So from that standpoint, that kind of covers it up there. And the battery life for these iPads have also been pretty decent as well. These iPad minis stand the test of time quite well. If you're wanting an iPad that's, again, going to be able to handle things you throw at it, this is probably going to be a decent one as well. So to kind of sum it up, what I'll definitely tell you is, the iPad mini 5 is a very interesting iPad when it comes down to it. On one hand, it's kind of worth it because it's still supported with software, and there's still quite a bit of a life ahead of it in some ways. But on the other hand, this probably isn't an iPad I'd recommend the average person to buy, because, you know, if you want to, you can go ahead and buy something like an iPad Air 4 that costs a little bit more than this thing but it has much more of a life ahead of it. And there's probably some other iPads I can think of as well that I'll leave linked down below. But the first immediate one is the iPad Air 5, the M1, you know, the iPad that one is, the iPad Air 4, which is probably a better deal than this thing. Even an iPad 10 in the used market would be better than this thing, in my opinion. So take it as you will. Even the iPad 9th generation is way better than this thing. Just buy those things. I wouldn't really recommend buying this one, in my opinion. So that pretty much covers it up there. If you have any other thoughts or questions, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that me so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.